So the last time we checked in with Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, they had just put a kind of an empty but partly full jar of honey at the bottom of a very deep pit so they could catch heffalumps and they made a date to meet at six in the morning. Six o'clock, Piglet, said Pooh, and have you got any string? No, why do you want string? To lead them home with, said Pooh. Oh, I think heffalumps come if you whistle. Some do and some don't. You never can tell with heffalumps. Well, good night. Good night. And off Piglet trotted to his house, Trespassers W, while Pooh made his preparations for bed. Some hours later, just as the night was beginning to steal away, Pooh woke up with a sinking feeling. He had had that sinking feeling before, and he knew what it meant. He was hungry. So he went to the larder, and he stood on a chair, and reached up to the top shelf and found nothing. That's funny, he thought. I know I had a jar of honey there, a full jar full of honey right up to the top, and it had honey written on it so that I should know it was honey. That's very funny. And then he began to wander up and down, wondering at where, where it was and murmuring a little murmur to himself like this. It's very, very funny because I know I had some honey because it had a label on saying honey, a galoptious full of pot to, and now I don't know where it's got to. No, I don't know where it's gone. Well, it's funny. He had murmured this to himself three times in a singing sort of way when suddenly he remembered. He had put it into the cunning trap to catch the heffalump. Bother, said Pooh. It all comes of trying to be kind to heffalumps. And he got back into bed. But he couldn't sleep. The more he tried to sleep, the more he couldn't. He tried counting sheep which is sometimes a good way of getting to sleep. And as that was no good, he tried counting heffalumps. And that was worse, because every heffalump that he counted was making straight for a pot of Pooh's honey and eating it all. For some minutes, he lay there miserably. But when the 587th heffalump was licking its jaws and saying to itself, very good honey, this. I don't know when I've tasted better. Pooh could bear it no longer. And he was a bear, so he couldn't bear it any longer. He jumped out of bed. He ran out of the house straight to the six pine trees. The sun was still in bed, but there was a lightness in the sky over the hundred-acre wood, which seemed to show that it was waking up and would soon be kicking off the clothes. In the half-light, the pine trees looked cold and lonely, and the very deep pit seemed deeper than it was, and Pooh's jar of honey at the bottom was something mysterious, a shape and no more. But as he got nearer to it, his nose told him it was indeed honey, and his tongue came out and began to polish up his mouth, ready for it. Bother, said Pooh as he got his nose inside the jar. A heffalump has been eating it. And then he thought a little and said, Oh no, I did it. I forgot. Indeed, he had eaten most of it, but there was a little left at the very bottom of the jar, and he pushed his head right in and began to lick. By and by, Piglet woke up. As soon as he woke up, he said to himself, Oh, then he said bravely, Yes, and then still more bravely, Quite so. But he didn't feel very brave, for the word which was really jigging about in his brain was heffalumps. What was a heffalump like? Was it fierce? Did it really come when you whistled? And how did it come? Was it fond of pigs at all? If it was fond of pigs, did it make any difference what sort of pig? Supposing it was fierce with pigs, would it make any difference if the pig had a grandfather called Trespassers William? He didn't know the answer to any of these questions, and he was going to see his first heffalump in about an hour from now. Of course, Pooh would be with him, and it was much more friendly with two. 
But suppose heffalumps were very fierce with pigs and bears. Wouldn't it be better to pretend that he had a headache and couldn't go up to the six pine trees this morning? But then suppose it was a very fine day and there was no heffalump in the trap. Here he would be in bed all morning, simply wasting his time for nothing. What should he do? Then he had a clever idea. He would go up very quietly to the six pine trees. Now, peep into the trap and see if there was a heffalump there. And if there was, he would go back to bed. And if there wasn't, he wouldn't. So off he went. At first he thought that there wouldn't be a heffalump in the trap, and then he thought that there would, and as he got near, he was sure there would, because he could hear it heffalumping about it, like anything. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, said Piglet to himself, and he wanted to run away. But somehow, having got so near, he felt that he must just see what a heffalump was like. So he crept to the side of the trap and looked in. And we'll find out what he sees in our next episode.